So in a previous video, I demonstrated how to extract eBay product data into a Google Sheet from eBay search results directly from eBay right into a Google Sheet. I then also demonstrated how this Google Sheet uh, will automatically locate potential sources of the eBay products that you scrape into the sheet. All right. Now, um, if you want to see how that process is done, you can find the video linked in the description of this video where it actually where I actually demonstrate that whole process. But in this video, I'm actually going to continue uh, with the next thing, which is to actually uh, pull product data for these different sources to help find products that are profitable. Right now, the first step is to actually generate a products list. And I'm going to show you what happens when you click on generate product list. And then I will go to the products list sheet. And what it will do is take this eBay product data. Let's go to products list so we can actually see the list being built. And it will actually copy that eBay product data over here on this part of the spreadsheet. And there's more to the spreadsheet, which I'll show you in a moment. And it will also copy the sources. So if you remember on the eBay sourcer sheet, the sources are multiple sources for each product. But now on this final product list sheet, you get the sources uh, on each row. So basically what happens is you're going to have multiple rows of the same product. So product number one, two times for two different sources. Product number two, several times with its different sources. All right. And so I'm going to show you more of the spreadsheet because as we go further to the right, there are some product data columns that can be filled in. And then all the way to the right is a profit calculation, a calculation of supplier cost, a calculation of eBay fees, and then a profit calculation. So this will give you your estimated profit and ROI. If you have other things you need to um, consider, then I mean, you might have to individually uh, consider those things for products. This is just to give you an immediate idea of the estimated profit and ROI that you could potentially make off of products. Okay, that's all this is going to do. All right. But to do that, we need the product data. Okay, we need, first of all, the prices of the products. Okay, and we need the shipping charge as well from the supplier, especially if we're drop shipping the product, especially if you're drop shipping. Uh, the stock would also be useful, right, to know if the product is in stock or not in stock. The lead time, very important. All right, now, so question is how do we get that data in here? For one, of course, there's the manual option, meaning I can actually manually open a uh, the product sources, and of course, I can manually copy the data that I need. If this product is $63, for instance, I could go ahead and type in that price uh, in the unit price and then see what I get, uh, for instance, right? Okay, so, I mean, of course, that's going to take a long time for this many sources, right? You'll be here all day. So, um, what are the options? Well, I'm going to do this so we can see this. I, in a previous version, um, I did talk about using SKU Grid to pull in this product data. And I am using SKU Grid, except now I'm, I took it a step further where I'm actually using their API service to make it even better. But first, let me, let me explain the first option that I've been using and that I've demonstrated in other videos. What I've demonstrated is that you can import, you get one of these SKU Grid subscriptions, and the one, the smallest one being 200 items of $14.99 a month. And uh, really, this is designed to help monitor your store, but I'm not using it for that. What I'm doing is I'm just pulling in the products so I can get all the data and download it. But the thing is, if it's on a 200 pro items subscription, then I can only import 200 and export 200 at a time. And as you can see um, on a Google Sheet such as this, um, you're going to have way more than 200 product sources. So you're going to keep importing, exporting over and over again. Uh, using this uh, option, import CSV, export CSV, and it takes still too much effort and too much time to do. So I have a much better option, which is the SKU Grid product data fetcher, which is an API uh, service. And so I'm going to demonstrate that. 
you just click on skew good product data fetcher and you click start fetch and list now of course you're gonna have to set your user and set the columns first um, normally but actually no you don't have to set columns on this Google sheet on this Google sheet you can just go to start fetch and list okay but you do have to have get a user ID through me okay so this is something where you're going to have to contact me and get a user ID um, and then you can try out this product data fetcher service however if you want to keep the service permanently then you will have to make a monthly contribution it's not going to be it's not large it's not a large amount but you do have to make a contribution because the API is not free I have to you know uh, the cost of the API is there right I have to front that cost and it's you know it's not small so basically users will contribute uh, their monthly amount which will be a small amount uh, for access but right now I just want to focus on how it actually works now when you first click that option you're not uh, gonna see data right away because it's going to take 50 products at a time and then drop that data in here all at once all right so you can't see it actually reading these and you can't see it using the API in the moment and you know pulling the product data actually it has to go in and scrape all that product data and then it has to bring it back to the uh, hair right with the API to Google Sheets and then it has to print it right so it takes a few minutes for it to do that um, but what I can show you meanwhile is that the other thing you can do once it has you've started okay you don't have to sit here and watch this what you can do is you can uh, schedule continue fetching all right and what schedule continue fetching does is that it's gonna set up a continual process of fetching data automatically Okay, as it says here, it will start fetching uh, and continue every n minutes that you set. So basically, wherever it last leaves off, it's going to keep fetching. What you're going to do is set it to a small number, maybe 10 minutes or something like that in between each one. Um, I'm actually going to use five in this video, and five might actually work, but uh, I'm going to use five and click OK. And then in the next five minutes, it will start fetching the next 50 products because these 50 should be done before the five minutes are up okay so that's basically how this works now um, while that's pull oh well here it is okay I was gonna uh, yeah so I guess it's been a few minutes I like to do it live so you can actually experience it I know you have to wait and you have to listen to me talk meanwhile but there's usually something that I need to say anyway that's important so basically um, you can see how price data has been pulled in for whew, all these products right these first uh, 50 rows right now it's continuing to get more it's going to continue to get more data soon okay for the rest of these products okay so you can do that manually I mean I did a schedule but by the way you could just click continue and then it will continue doing it uh, but I did a schedule which means it's going to continue doing it automatically in five minutes from the moment that I and then every five minutes it's going to keep going okay so I want you to understand how to do that so you don't have to sit here and wait anyway now that we have the prices, the point is I can go over here and I can actually start to see uh, what has profit just by looking at these numbers because it's and it's just basing it. Look, it's based on the eBay list price that we have over here compared to the price that you're getting from the supplier. Uh, also, you know, the number of units. So there are different things that you might have to change here. Uh, if it's a two pack, you might have to change units, uh, number of units to two, things like that. Right. Um... You know, if you have a different shipping situation, I mean, they're just different little things that might have to be changed, depending on your situation. But basically, um, okay, this is what it's going to give you. Uh, some items might be removed, as you can see. So then there's no data. They've been removed from Walmart. Walmart has a lot of that. And then um, there's some sites that just don't work with SKU Grid. So SKU Grid supports hundreds of suppliers, but I suppose Alibaba might not be one of them. So, because I don't see Alibaba showing up, right? So Alibaba's showing up as a source, but um, and that might not even be a correct source anyway, right? So, uh, and again, it's going to continue to work to try to get this other data um, gradually, right? So you can use the setting uh, to let it work, and then you can come back later uh, to look at results. All right. Um, what else might I mention here? So... To make it a little easier, I've created an eBay link here that you can click so that you don't have to find the eBay link back here. So, um, actually, 
uh, what I want to show you is that you should click up at the top row. Okay, it's a good idea to click on this top row, row number one. Go to data, create a filter. The reason is that you really want to be able to filter your results. And the other thing is that you can then go all the way over and actually use this filter. For instance, if you want to filter the ROI, you can do it by color because I did conditional format, but you should learn how to do this mathematically, which is you're going to do filter by condition greater than. All right, and you could just, it might be 0%, but you might want things that are higher than 5%. Whatever it is, I'm just going to use 0% right now for this video, but you might want to do greater than 5%. I mean, whatever it is that you, you're thinking, right? But again, this is just the estimation, so we don't really know exactly, right? But it's going to give us an idea of the price difference, okay? So now what I'm going to do is actually then have to inspect these because there's really um, not a guarantee that the products um are going to match their sources because they're it's being done by title so it's not um you know we're not like going to be 100 percent sure until we actually look at the products to see if they're really the same product but what's going to happen is that um the fact that most of them will match so what your the amount of work you have to do has been greatly reduced even if just most of them match all right, so we look here. Okay, this chair, and we look over here at this chair. And I haven't looked at these ahead of time, so uh, I'm like in the moment discovering this just like you are watching the video. So I'm seeing that, okay, these look like the same product. Um, this one, it ended here. For, it was 422, apparently, when it ended. Um, and it actually sold at 422, apparently, on March 26th about a month ago uh 2023 all right and so then if this in fact is the source of that product we can see that it's about 2.99 at walmart it's out of stock but it's 2.99 at walmart all right so it appears to be a profitable product all right i mean going by the fact that someone was able to sell it for 22 that it only cost about 2.99 at walmart and i already have that data in here I have the price here and I have the, the eBay price over here. And so that's how I already have the calculation over here of the ROI, which is coming out to be about 10.6%. Assuming that uh, shipping is zero. Okay, remember it gives you the shipping data as well. So, I mean, that's great, you know? And if you, by the way, now as far as the pictures, if you feel like the pictures are just too invisible, um, you're going to have to sacrifice. I mean, it's not a big sacrifice, but. Uh, Instead of having small rows, you're going to have to have taller roll, taller rows if you want to be able to see these better. You're going to have to do format, wrapping. No, is it wrap? I believe wrap is what I usually would do for images. But it might not do it in this case. Okay, but yeah, depending on what. It might have to do with the filter or something else. Um, the other option is just to actually increase the row size by clicking one row control shift down like that and well it's not going to do the whole sheet because it's not filtered uh, because it is filtered um, and then you can actually adjust the row size they've kind of changed they've updated this the handle over here I kind of don't like how they did that it's a little to me it's actually harder to adjust the rows now they thought it was an improvement I guess and um, you can make the rows a bit taller and when the rows are taller, the images are larger. And you can see your images a bit better, you know, which can kind of help, right? So these images are uh, supplier images. Um, no, I don't have eBay images yet, but um, that's something I could add on a future update. If you want to have eBay images as well, you know, you could definitely do that. But um, I mean, really, to me, just open the link because I mean, you have you still have to open the link. To verify everything right you should do a manual verification of things so just have an image on at the supplier i think is already a lot i mean to give you an idea of what the product will look like um if it's the right product okay and that's basically the idea i mean um you know the same way i did that first product and we saw that it matched and was profitable it's the same process for all the products is not really much more 
to it than that. And that is pretty much it. Um, that really is the process. At this point, you know, you would be done, except that I should mention the list hasn't been generated for all the products yet, right? Let me see. Last source row that was copied, meaning the last row in the sheet that has sources was 247. Um, over here, it says that the last row of items is 247. Um, but the last row of sources is 127. Okay, so. Oh, I see what happened. Okay, I, ha I hadn't. I, I kept generating the list before I finished sourcing is what I did. Okay, so ideally you should finish sourcing, basically, and then you'll generate the list. All right. Um, okay, so that's just some details. Don't worry about those details. When you use the system, those kind of things become more clear to you. Uh, it's just something, you know, um, common practice to, to finish sourcing and then generate the list after. Um, and, yeah, I think that's about it, actually. And I should mention, however, that when you generate a list and it stops because that's how Google Sheets works, macros will stop after a few minutes, you can click generate list again and it will just continue from where it left off. All right, so that's something I should mention, and I'm probably going to add a continue generate. I didn't, I kind of, I think that was a bit of an oversight on my part. So I'll add a continue generate option as well, like I did with these continue uh, sourcing, so that it will just keep generating perhaps uh, without needing you to press the button to further uh, continue generating the list. And um, that will be for um, a future update. So that's it. That is the process that you will follow between what I did in the previous video, pulling all the data from eBay, pull, pulling sources, and then uh, pulling the product data from the sources uh, with the formula profit calculation, uh, thus uh, giving you or uh, helping you get to profitable products. If you are interested in this stupid product data fetcher, it's becoming really essential. It's why I created it, because I needed it personally. Uh, and once I got it to work for me and I saw it really worked, I said, okay, well, I've got to make a multi-user version because other people need this too. And so if you want, I'm sharing that technology, but it's not free technology. It's not free for me. And so uh, it, it's not going to be free, but it's something that's going to be very useful. Um, it comes with a monthly charge. Okay, Skewgrid API, they charge every month for this thing. So basically... Um, through me, however, you're going to pay way less than you would pay if you were to do Stricter API by yourself. Plus, I actually already wrote the code and got it to work, which you won't have to go pay someone to do that or figure out how to do it yourself. So it's going to be really highly beneficial at a low monthly char uh, contribution. It's really a contribution to the thing so I can keep you know the whole thing running for you, the multi-user version running for you. And so, um, yeah, you just contact me if you want to use this. Um, all right. And that's basically it. Just contact me. Everything's about contacting me and seeing links in the description of the video. That's what you have to do. Um, I'm Mr. Mark. And I do look forward to either hearing from you directly or just hearing from you on one of these videos on my channels.